Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss an extremely interesting experiment that to some extent created a black hole right here on planet Earth. Okay, not like an actual black hole that's going to destroy everything, but a very intriguing analog black hole, or I guess a black hole replica, made entirely out of material possessing quantum effects. And by itself, this actually has a lot of potential implications for many different studies involving black holes, the universe, our understanding of everything in it, and even things like gravity. And so let's actually discuss this a little bit more, because as of right now, this is probably one of the most exciting experiments involving what's known as analog black holes. But first, a few basic concepts to help you understand. So obviously right now there's really no way for us to directly study black holes, especially because the nearest one is almost 2000 light years away from us. Which means that all of the research involving black holes is usually either based on simulations or direct observations using various telescopes and previous predictions from a lot of different ideas and a lot of different theories. But there is actually another way, an experimental way, where we can technically create something really small, usually microscopic in size, that kind of acts like a black hole and helps us understand a lot of its properties. For example, one way to create something that possesses certain properties of black holes is by forming what's known as Bose-Einstein condensate, a type of a state of matter where a lot of particles are cooled down so much that they basically start acting like one large superparticle, or technically one large superwave. And this can actually produce what's known as a light black hole, because they essentially slow down light so much that it can even sometimes stop it completely. But a much more common example in the lab usually uses what's known as sonic black holes, or basically black holes where everything is replaced with sound. Sometimes also referred to as acoustic black holes, where essentially instead of light and instead of matter, you'll have phonons, or perturbations of sound that can travel through sound waves, and sometimes you can actually make them fall into a kind of a hypothetical black hole where they're unable to escape a certain region. Normally, this region is formed by some kind of a fluid. And so here, by using certain liquids and then watching sound propagate inside of them, researchers found different ways to kind of mimic the effects from various black holes as well. And intriguingly, in just the last few years, there have been some major breakthroughs. Because these unusual black holes seem to exhibit very similar effects to what we actually expect from a real black hole. For example, many different sonic black holes seem to exhibit Hawking radiation. A kind of a phononic version of it, or basically using sound waves, but they essentially emit energy from the equivalent of the event horizon. We've briefly discussed one of these experiments in one of the videos in the description. And here the event horizon is basically defined by the flow of the liquid. Here the speed of flow is greater than the speed of sound, so it actually forms a kind of an event horizon. Moreover, back in 2010, and actually in several other experiments afterwards, the researchers were able to recreate a kind of a rotating black hole also known as Kerr black hole. And here they demonstrated the effect known as super radiance, a process that's able to extract energy from the rotation of the black hole, and usually much more energy than we can actually get from anything else. And this by itself is a really exciting concept, and astronomers have actually seen signs of this from a lot of different black holes out there, real ones, not the sonic ones. And so these black hole replicas, or sonic black holes, seem to be possible because fluids tend to experience very similar effects, and they even exhibit very similar properties, especially when it comes to motion of stuff inside of them. But the thing is, there's always been one problem. Most liquids also have quite a lot of viscosity. Basically, they kind of stick to things. And so this viscosity presents a lot of uncertainty and a lot of problems. It actually creates a lot of random motion that would not exist in black holes because we don't expect space-time to stick to anything. And so for many years, scientists have been proposing to use superliquids or superfluids. Fluids that are basically perfect, containing no viscosity, producing no friction, and not sticking to anything at all. And though it might sound like something that doesn't exist, it totally does, in the realm of quantum physics. And it's known as superfluidity, a kind of a cousin to superconductivity. With the two most well-known superfluids, both being helium, helium-3 and helium-4. And so isotopes of helium, when cooled down dramatically, here we're talking about temperatures almost at absolute zero, will start acting really, really strange. There's this much older video from the 60s kind of showing us some of these effects. One of the craziest effects is visible right here. It tends to actually crawl up the walls of any kind of a container 
and then drips down like there is no gravity and it doesn't actually care. And it can even create unusual fountains that can basically function indefinitely because there is no viscosity, no friction and it can basically just feed itself over and over. And so these very strange helium experiments back in the days first of all blew everyone's minds and later on made everyone realize that we needed new theories, new explanations and very likely a lot of quantum physics. But that's beside the point. The point is that these super liquids do exist, we know quite a lot about them already and they do have very unusual properties such as zero viscosity which allows them to move without any loss of energy and more importantly allows them to be stirred and to create vortices that would technically spin indefinitely. So in theory if you were to stir helium-4 at these extreme temperatures it should basically spin forever and ever and never stop. But it's a quantum fluid. So that means that it basically laughs at our classical ideas and anytime we try something it surprises us once again. Turns out if you stir a quantum superfluid first of all it doesn't actually do anything at all. And so here the experiments were really shocking. The researchers were basically trying to spin it by spinning the container itself. But because there is no viscosity instead of going with the container the liquid helium would just stay not moving and not doing anything. However, it turns out that if you spin the container faster and faster, at some point the container reaches a kind of a critical angular velocity. And so instead of being stationary, now the superfluid starts to form vortex. But not just one, many of them. And they kind of look like this. They're extremely small in size, practically miniature, and they're referred to as abricosov vortex. And moreover, the number of these vortices and the way they behave, all of this is quantized. In other words, it can only exist in certain states. It can only spin in a certain way, it can only create certain patterns and it cannot change in any other way. And so unlike water that basically spins any way it wants, these quantum vortices are extremely different. And as you increase the rotation more and more, more of these quantized vortices start to appear, changing the pattern accordingly. Which kind of doesn't actually help us with these studies of black holes because we don't think black holes do the same, or at least that's not what science shows us so far. Which made a lot of these studies using superfluid helium a little bit challenging. They could only produce tiny tiny vortices, which technically do represent tiny black holes, but it's difficult to see them, difficult to study, and they don't actually last very long. They're not stable, they disappear all the time. And that's until now. A recent study just came out and potentially discovered a way to stabilize everything and to actually create a relatively large quantum vortex, a picture of which you see right here. And the only way they were able to create this is by finding a way to merge all of these individual quantized vertices into one large one. This seems to only happen at certain frequencies, so everything has to spin in just the right way, with the vortex then behaving as a kind of a multiple quantized object. And so despite the instability of individual quantum vortices, the researchers found a way to stabilize it by using a very specific wave vortex interaction and using a miniaturized device you see right here, which then creates this analog black hole resembling a typical vortex. And even more importantly, when this unusual vortex was created, it started to exhibit extremely interesting effects. First of all, they observed unusual standing waves. And in some sense, these waves are extremely similar to what we detect from black holes, especially after a black hole collision. These overtones, previously observed from various colliding black holes, are a type of a ring down that happen right after the black hole is formed. And that's actually something that was just observed here as well. As soon as those tiny quantized vortices merged, they produced something similar. Here's the image of these unusual bound states or these standing waves that were also produced in this vortex, referred to as bound states. And that basically suggests that a lot of this resembles gravitational environment around typical black holes. They seem to possess a lot of similar effects and they even seem to possess effects that we only discovered in just the last few years. Basically this vortex seems to resemble space-time dragging very very well. Naturally because it contains no viscosity but also because it contains a lot of quantum effects. And that's actually the really important part. Today astrophysicists believe that the only way we can explain what's happening in black holes and the only way we can explain things like gravity is really by combining quantum effects with classical physics. Nobody knows what the answer is yet but it's really studies like this that might finally lead us to an actual answer. Because this is a combination of quantum fields and the effects we observe in astrophysical black holes, 
This takes us just a step closer to maybe explaining everything once and for all. But on top of this, there's another discovery here that's basically staring us in the face. For some reason, a lot of these different mimics, a lot of these analog black holes, seem to always result in producing effects similar to gravity. And that actually relates to the idea known as emergent gravity. The idea that proposes that maybe gravity is not actually a force, but instead is something that just happens in certain complex systems, including systems involving black holes, stars and galaxies, or systems involving quantum vortices. And so in other words, these experiments using superfluids may potentially explain everything in the universe at some point in the future. They don't yet, but it's experiments like this that are able to create mimic black holes that are most likely to answer all of these questions. But obviously this is just a start and we don't have any answers yet. Once we do, I'll make sure to make another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all of the links and all of the papers in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.